What's up my movers and shakers? I'm Dave, this is MS Paints, and this is a tutorial I randomly found on my computer that I did in March. Now, I remember printing these guys off from Lost Kingdom Miniatures when I just got my Anycubic Felt on in March, and I scaled one of them up to be the Alpha, I can't remember which one, but they are, they are fucking mint, man. What have I got? And of course, they are still available from Lost Kingdom Miniatures if you missed them on their Patreon month. Available either from certain resellers, or that is if they don't sell them direct themselves. So I found a tutorial, watched it, Thought it was actually still kind of useful. Some people might get something out of it. And so I'm going to just put it together right now. So I guess this kind of fits in with the Making Seraphon Great Again series. So I guess... Welcome to part three. So instead of wet blending, we're just going to use inks and then progressively water them down into glazes. If you've never done that before, don't worry, I'm thick as pig shit. I have minimal depth perception and I am physically incapable of doing edge highlights. So if you can relate to any or all three of these things, you can probably definitely would want to do this too. You can punch out some beautiful lizard man tones in about two and a half hours. What have I got? Whoa there, cowboy. Before you run to your wardrobe to look for your big boy pants, at the mere sight of an airbrush, I'm just using it for the base coating. There's no zenith or tricks here or highlighting. I just refuse to spend half an hour on something that can be done in 10 minutes. I have a 75-25 mix of koala green shade and water in this airbrush. But the face blistering 15 PSI output on this thing is too extreme for me. And it isn't going on how I'd like it. So no more airbrush today. So I'm painting the same mixture on all over the model to produce the actual base color that I want. I sometimes do this a second time to darken a specific model down a little bit since every lizard man is special. This adds a little bit of variation in larger units. Subtle but effective. I've chosen three different color inks for this. We've got a green, a blue, and an iffy green. Whatever that is, maybe turquoisey. I don't know! And because our base color is based on a ghostly bluey gray color and then kind of turquoised up, all three of these colors are going to gel perfectly with that. I was genuinely awful at filming stuff back then, so I'll explain better what I'm doing. The scaly areas are like a neat, undiluted ink straight from the pot, and as it transitions into these softer hide areas, I'm going to clean my brush and tease the wet ink out in thinner strokes. After it's dried, I take a really diluted mixture of the same ink and glaze over the transition points. It's a common misconception that to use a glaze, you go over just like all the parts of the body that are involved in a transition. So like a top to bottom of the arm, you do the entire arm. No, you do not. Glaze the transition and that's about it. You want to ease the transition in, not ease everything else into the transition, if that makes sense, or at least that's what a big boy told me. But provided your glaze is weak enough and you're patient enough and have the time to kill or a spellbinder playlist on the go like I do, you can apply it to the transition area and just really take your time blending this up. I'm dry brushing on our original base color, which is the, I think it's ghost gray or blue gray from Vallejo Game Color. Again, keeping everything locked off, few simple colors. Go easy on this as there are some fairly pronounced areas on these proxigors. We 
It was dark aluminium, as always, again, from Vallejo, to cover the majority of the metal parts. Since orange is the complementary colour to blue, and because I'm a complete coward, I decided to go with orange loincloths. And I start this process uh, with a base of yellow. And using two coats where needed, with yellow, it's always needed. We're going to tint this later on, so keep that in mind. Use a light brown for the ropes, leather, and various bindings and trinkets. And hit any bones, teeth, claws, any fetishes with rakar flesh. We do have enough going on with this model without adding too many strong colours on the knickknacks. This is liquid gold from Vallejo. Interesting stuff. Uh, use a brush you wouldn't want to be seen dead in a restaurant with for this because whatever's in this shit will kill your Windsor and Newton in minutes. Now to get the orange effect, I'm using Fugan Orange from Games Workshop directly onto the yellow loincloth. This is easier and more interesting than painting on flat orange. And throw some Reichlin flesh shade on the bones, the claws and the teeth. For any gemstones and beads that are painted metallic, I use these Fancy Pants Technical Paints from Games Workshop. I have no idea what they actually are, but whatever they are is very convenient. And they make gemstones a breeze. I learned from my mistakes with my huge Stegodon project and went with a more subtle contrast paint purple for the inside of the mouth. I'm a patient man, but highlighting the inside of a lizard man's mouth is where I absolutely draw the line. Loincloths were then highlighted yellow. Not edge highlight, of course, goodness no, disgusting. Large blocks of yellow on the raised areas. I painted these loincloth highlights like I was painting a fence panel in miniature form. Slap it on. Once everything is dried, I gave it a unified coat of army paint, a strong tone. I'm careful not to let it pool too much, as the ink has done a lot in the recesses in terms of shading already. But for the weapons, metallics and golds, it really ties everything together. So there we have it. In about three hours, we got some pretty striking looking proxy gores. Ready to take up residence in the cabinet of things I won't be able to afford to cover with my contents insurance. Thank you very much for watching guys. I hope that you're gonna check back in sometime soon or check out the previous videos for the Seraphon project if that's your thing. Previous video, I made a 3D printed Stegodon out of all 3D printed parts and some kit bash Seraphon bits. Like, if that's your thing, go check that shit out. Take care, be excellent to each other, and as always, smoke less. Because you can't run away from life's responsibilities if you're going to get out of breath. Cheers, I'm out of here.